guys, welcome to the channel. Today I've got a very special guest with me. It's Iwei, my brunch oh. buddy. So today Iwei and I are going to be talking to you guys about some professional life tips. Um, mainly today we're going to be talking about Iwei's experience in her role as a consultant at one of the big firms. So Iwei, can you give us a little bit of an introduction? So I was born and raised in China and then went to the States for university and worked there for a little bit before I moved to New Zealand. What I studied was psychology and IT management, with IT management being my um, major. What was that like? Like, was it helpful going forward? It was, I think, in, while you know, being consulting. We tend to be generalists when we first start, so uh, it doesn't matter what major you study. You could be studying French uh, or any literature, and you can still become a very really good consultant. Okay. Um, but uh, because I study IT management, so I have that basic knowledge about IT, and when it comes to you know what's really hot topic today, cloud computing, yep. uh, cyber security, yeah. um, business intelligence. So I, I would say um, studying uh, IT management gave me a good foundation mm -hmm. and good guidance of knowing, you know, well, I, I was very really interested in this area when I was studying, so I could explore this area more. Yeah, so I basically applied for, you know, consulting roles in general, uh, and in consulting you normally have management consulting and technology consulting, mm -hmm. and then there's more under that, but that's the um, very, very high level um, grouping of it. Yeah. So um, I applied for technology because that was my background, mm -hmm. but um, I wouldn't say if you didn't study IT or um, anything very technical, you could apply for technology roles. Mm -hmm. It's very big now, I think, to make sure your LinkedIn profile is mm -hmm. like tip-top shape. And I know you are very into your LinkedIn profile, so do yeah. you have any tips? You know, think of LinkedIn profile as your business card. Mm -hmm. And um, what do you want to show people, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and be personal, not just about work stuff. Uh, you know, on my LinkedIn profile, I would talk about I enjoy exercising mm -hmm. and enjoy um, hiking. So. So professionally, you know, what you've done, the work you've done, the work you, you want to focus on, because I know some of us might have different working experiences that fit into different roles. So know where you're heading and also have the personal side of you so that people see you as a person rather than just as you know, a future candidate. And one thing I'd add is to have someone who is, you know, in the field that you're interested in to critique because uh, they have a different view of, yeah. you know, if I were someone who are interested in you as a candidate, what would I be looking for? So it's, it's good to have a different perspective. How do you get that though if you, for example, don't have a friend who's working in that field that you might be interested in? Like, yeah. do you just reach out straight away? Another way is to, to reach out to people to say, hey, you know, I know you have experience in this field. Um, you know, here's what I'm trying to achieve. Be very clear and uh, just ask for them help, their help, and you will be surprised. I know it sounds intimidating that you know going to a stranger and never met in person to say, hey, can I can I ask can for I ask advice? For advice? Yeah. Can I ask for help? But you would be surprised how you know how people are willing to help you, and that's what I found. You know, I, I've made calls with people in Singapore, in the States, in Australia, who I've never met, and because I'm, I'm just interested in their work, mm -hmm. and I reached out and they got back to me. Mm -hmm. So so don't be afraid of asking, and um, it's very powerful once you really do it. Yeah. yeah. I think also, like, I guess related to that is that those people who actually more often be flattered rather than be offended by your request so yeah. I mean everyone likes to feel good and everyone likes to know that they can help someone and give provide guidance to a young professional so yeah. I think it's actually like a really good thing to do yeah just just you know don't don't think people are not trying to help mm. you know everyone does it's just uh, but don't be dis disencouraged if no one gets back to you because yeah. we, we're all busy in our lives um, sometimes you, you won't get response and it's okay. There are so many people out there who can help you. Yeah. And also, I'd say be professional. 
when you ask for help because mm -hmm. you're asking for a favor. Yeah. Maybe that person is just very nice and very kind and wants to help everyone who reach out to them, but. Uh, just try to be clear, not not wasting their time. Yeah, yeah. I've definitely uh, noticed some people when they reach out for help, they they're not clear of um, what, what they, they have, want. Of yeah. what they want. Yeah. And they they didn't pass on the message in a professional and respectful way, yeah. but rather demanding. Yeah. And that's the worst thing you can do, you know, without meeting someone and asking for help. Yeah. Definitely remember to be respectful. I guess yeah. it's just writing, like writing any business email. Yeah, you say exactly. hi, you say this is who I am, this is what I would like from you and if you have time I would really appreciate you getting back to exactly. me. Don't beat around the bush, say hi, hi, hi a few times and then ask for what you want. Yeah, because you might never get a high <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So just try to do it all in that one hit. I think that's one of the things I admire about you is that you're very confident and you're unapologetic about your confidence. So like for people who aren't that confident, like what would you say to them? There are little tricks you can do is, you know, just get involved in different things mm -hmm. and once you're get, get, getting good at, at things, you, you become more confident. And I can take, you know, workout as an example. I'm yeah. not a really, you know, athletic person, but I get involved into physical exercises and I just invest time into it and I become better at it. And I think that's a way of building confidence. Yeah. And sometimes confidence doesn't come um, with do something you already know really well. It comes with you challenge yourself to do something that you didn't think you could, but you turned out to be very, a very good result. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes you surprise yourself how much potential you have. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that interview with Iwei. I'm planning to do a couple more of these. Hopefully it's going to be helpful for you young professionals out there, graduates out there, and those of you who are just looking to enter into the workforce. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!